Imagine a fighter jet that doesn't need a runway, no massive airbase with miles of concrete, no vulnerable infrastructure that can be destroyed with a single strike, just a highway, a clearing, or even a ship's deck. Now imagine that fighter operates without a pilot in the cockpit, not remotely controlled from thousands of miles away, but genuinely autonomous, thinking, adapting, and engaging threats on its own. This isn't science fiction. This is Shield AI's VBAT, and it represents something fundamentally different from every fighter jet currently flying. For decades, air power has depended on sprawling infrastructure, runways stretching thousands of feet, maintenance hangars, fuel depots, support equipment. These bases cost billions to build and require constant protection. In modern warfare, they're not just assets. They're targets painted with crosshairs visible from space. One precision strike and hundreds of aircraft sight grounded, unable to fulfill their mission. We've watched this vulnerability play out in Ukraine, where inexpensive drones have destroyed multi-million dollar aircraft sitting stationary on airfields. We've seen it in the Red Sea, where cheap Houthi drones force navies to fire interceptor missiles, costing millions each. The imbalance is obvious. High value assets remain vulnerable on the ground, regardless of their capability in the air. And for the first time, engineers aren't just acknowledging this problem, they've built a solution that eliminates it entirely. Today, we're examining Shield AI's VBAT, exploring how artificial intelligence is transforming fighter operations, and understanding why this platform might represent the future of air combat more than any traditional fighter currently in development. The four problems VBAT solves. When the Pentagon issued requirements for next-generation combat aircraft, they outlined challenges that traditional fighters simply cannot address. Shield AI, founded by combat veterans and aerospace engineers, identified four fundamental problems with legacy air power and designed VBAT to eliminate each one. Problem one, runway dependency. Without runways, conventional fighters become museum pieces. They're engineering marvels that can't operate. The VBAT's vertical takeoff and landing capability eliminates this vulnerability entirely. It can launch from almost any terrain, desert hard pan, forest clearings, parking lots, even moving ships. The launch and recovery vehicle is compact enough to deploy from standard military trucks, creating instant launch sites wherever they're needed. Problem two, logistical complexity. Legacy jets require massive support infrastructure, fuel convoys stretching for miles, maintenance hangars with specialized equipment, ground crews numbering in the hundreds. The VBAT's compact footprint changes this calculation dramatically. Three VBATs occupy the deck space of a single F-35. The reduced support requirements mean smaller logistics chains, fewer vulnerable supply lines, and faster deployment cycles. Problem three, range limitations. A fighter's operational radius defines how far a nation can project power. Traditional aircraft are constrained by fuel capacity and tanker availability. The VBAT addresses this through extended range, over 2,000 nautical miles combat radius, combined with autonomous operations that enable extended endurance missions without pilot fatigue considerations. Problem four, human limitations. Pilots black out under extreme G-forces. They require oxygen, temperature control, and rest cycles. They experience fear, fatigue, and distraction. The VBAT's AI pilot, called Hivemind, doesn't have these constraints. It processes information at machine speed, executes maneuvers beyond human tolerance, and operates continuously without degradation. These aren't incremental improvements. This is fundamental reimagining of what fighter aircraft can be when you remove the constraints that have defined aviation since the Wright brothers. Hivemind, the autonomous pilot. Every aircraft is only as capable as the mind controlling it. For over a century, that mind was exclusively human. Shield AI's hive mind represents the first genuine alternative, not autopilot, not remote control, but autonomous decision-making in combat environments. Hive mind emerged from Shield AI's classified neural combat programs trained on thousands of real combat engagements. This isn't simulation data or theoretical scenarios. This is actual combat footage, sensor logs, and engagement records from real operations. The system has absorbed tactics from the world's best fighter pilots Every maneuver, every evasion pattern, every successful engagement analyzed and integrated into its decision-making architecture. Unlike human pilots, Hivemind doesn't need oxygen or temperature control. It doesn't experience fatigue or distraction. It doesn't feel fear or hesitation. Every combat engagement reduces to one fundamental cycle, the OODA loop, observe, orient, decide, act. The faster you complete this cycle, the greater your combat advantage. Human pilots complete OODA loops in seconds. Hivemind operates at machine speed, processing sensor data 
and executing decisions in milliseconds. It doesn't see one target. It maintains awareness of everything simultaneously. Radar returns, infrared signatures, electronic emissions, friendly force positions, threat assessments all merge into a single integrated picture updated continuously in real time. One V-Bat can fight effectively alone. 10 V-Bats can coordinate like a squadron with perfect communication and synchronized tactics. A hundred V-Bats become something entirely different, a distributed intelligence network where each platform contributes to collective awareness and coordinated action. Shield AI's ultimate vision extends beyond individual aircraft autonomy. They're developing a global network architecture where one AI system could potentially coordinate entire fleets across multiple domains air, sea, and ground, all learning from each engagement, all adapting tactics based on accumulated experience. This raises profound questions about future warfare. When autonomous systems can process information faster than humans can perceive it, when they can coordinate at scales impossible for human commanders, when they never tire or lose focus, what does that mean for how conflicts unfold? The platform's specifications, the VBAT's capabilities, exist at the intersection of several technologies that individually would be impressive, but combined create something unprecedented. The propulsion system utilizes a custom F-16-class turbofan engine fine-tuned for vertical takeoff, thrust vectoring, and high agility. While Shield AI keeps precise performance specifications classified, they've confirmed the platform is designed for supersonic flight capability. The combination of powerful propulsion, relatively compact airframe, and tailless aerodynamic design achieves high lift-to-drag ratios that enable extreme performance. The afterburner-equipped engine with thrust vectoring nozzle provides substantial power in a package optimized for the VBAT's unique operational profile. According to the development team, this configuration makes the VBAT one of the highest flying and fastest things in the sky, while maintaining vertical takeoff and landing capability. This combination of VTOL and supersonic potential puts the VBAT in exclusive company. The F-35B is currently the only operational fighter that can reach supersonic speeds and land vertically. The VBAT joins this category while adding autonomous operation that the F-35B lacks. Stealth represents another critical capability. The VBAT's tailless configuration and blended body design help radar waves pass without generating strong returns. The acoustic profile is engineered for reduced noise and heat signature, making detection more difficult across multiple sensor types. Shield AI has conducted extensive testing to validate low observability. Radar cross-section testing using pole-mounted models allows precise measurement of detectability from every angle. Wind tunnel testing analyzes how the airframe shape and surface materials scatter radar energy and manage thermal signatures. The company positions the VBAT to compete with or augment fifth-generation fighters like the F-22 and F-35, not by matching every specification, but by combining stealth with runway independence, mobility, and AI autonomy that traditional fighters cannot provide. Weapons integration follows a multi-role design philosophy. Internal weapons bays maintain stealth profile while carrying air-to-air -air missiles for engaging enemy aircraft. For missions requiring maximum firepower, External hardpoints can carry larger munitions at the expense of some stealth characteristics. Beyond kinetic weapons, the VBAT includes electronic warfare capabilities. The onboard EW suite can jam enemy radar and communications, blind targeting systems, and disrupt adversary command networks, essentially weaponizing the electromagnetic spectrum using power generated by the main engine. The critical capability that distinguishes VBAT from other unmanned systems is its ability to autonomously close kill chains it can find targets using its own sensors, track them through maneuvering, and engage them without requiring third-party targeting data or human authorization for individual attacks within predefined mission parameters. Operational advantages. The VBAT's design creates operational advantages that become clearer when you consider realistic combat scenarios rather than just technical specifications. Consider the Pacific Theater, where vast distances separate potential conflict zones from friendly bases. Traditional fighters operating from Guam or aircraft carriers have limited time over target areas due to fuel constraints. They depend on tanker support that itself becomes vulnerable to long-range missiles. VBATs could deploy from distributed locations throughout island chains, operating from sites impossible for conventional fighters to use. Each platform operates autonomously, reducing the command and control burden on human operators, while maintaining coordinated tactics through the hive mind network. 
When one VBAT detects threats, every connected platform receives that information instantly. When tactics need adjustment based on enemy responses, the entire force adapts simultaneously. This distributed yet coordinated approach creates resilience. Destroying individual platforms doesn't collapse the network or eliminate capability. The logistics advantage compounds over time. Supporting conventional fighter operations requires enormous supply chains. Fuel trucks, munitions convoys, maintenance equipment, and spare parts all must reach forward bases continuously. Each supply convoy becomes a target. Each fuel depot represents vulnerability. VBAT's reduced logistics footprint means smaller, more distributed supply requirements. The platforms can operate from locations where supporting traditional fighters would be impossible or prohibitively expensive. The economic calculation matters enormously. While exact VBAT costs remain undisclosed, the platform is designed to be producible in large numbers at a fraction of manned fighter costs. When you remove life support systems, ejection seats, cockpit displays, and extensive pilot protection, significant weight and cost savings result. More importantly, you can accept different risk calculations. Losing a VBAT is losing a machine and its weapons load. Losing a manned fighter is losing a machine, weapons, and a pilot who represents millions in training investment and years of experience. This doesn't mean VBATs are expendable, but it does mean commanders can employ them in scenarios where manned aircraft risk is unacceptable. The broader implications. The VBAT exists within a larger ecosystem of emerging technologies that together might fundamentally transform air combat operations. Consider the potential integration with systems like Lockheed Martin's Vector Drone Swarms. Imagine VBATs operating autonomously with each platform controlling hundreds of smaller drones. The VBAT provides high performance capability while the drone swarm extends sensor coverage and multiplies engagement capacity. The VBAT's hive mind coordinates this entire network, scanning terrain, tracking targets, coordinating attacks across domains simultaneously. No radio latency, no miscommunication, just one distributed intelligence network operating with machine precision. This concept extends to other emerging technologies. Electric propulsion systems under development could provide instant torque response, extended endurance, and dramatically reduced thermal signatures. Near silent flight combined with stealth characteristics would make detection extremely difficult until weapons release. The convergence of AIA autonomy, advanced propulsion, and networked operations creates capabilities that exceed what any individual technology could achieve. This isn't just evolution, it's a fundamental shift in how air power projects force. However, significant questions remain unresolved. How do autonomous systems operate under rules of engagement designed for human decision-making? When AI makes engagement decisions at machine speed, how do you ensure accountability? When systems operate beyond human perception and reaction time, how do commanders maintain meaningful control? These aren't just technical questions. They're ethical, legal, and strategic challenges that technology alone cannot answer. The military will need new doctrine, new command structures, and new frameworks for employing autonomous combat systems responsibly. International implications are equally significant. When one nation deploys autonomous fighters at scale, others will feel compelled to match capability. This could trigger autonomous weapons development races that accelerate faster than human-controlled programs because the development cycle doesn't include pilot training or human factors engineering. Production Timeline and Challenges Shield AI has announced ambitious production timelines that, if achieved, would represent remarkably fast development for fighter-class aircraft. Initial VTOL demonstrations are projected for 2026. This means proving vertical takeoff and landing capability, validating flight control systems, and demonstrating basic autonomous operation within approximately one year from now. Combat-ready status is targeted for 2028. This implies completing weapons integration, validating sensor packages, proving hive mind decision-making in realistic scenarios, and achieving whatever certification standards apply to autonomous combat systems. Full production is planned for 2029, suggesting transition from test articles and demonstration platforms to serial manufacturing within three years. For context, traditional fighter programs typically require 15 to 20 years from concept to operational deployment, Several factors might enable this accelerated timeline. First, modern computational design tools allow extensive virtual testing before building physical prototypes. Second, removing the human pilot eliminates thousands of design requirements related to crew safety and life support. Third, the company benefits from existing engine and subsystem technologies rather than developing everything from scratch.
However, significant challenges remain. Autonomous combat systems will face intense scrutiny from military leadership, civilian oversight, and international observers. Proving that hive mind makes appropriate decisions under combat stress requires testing scenarios that are difficult to replicate outside actual operations. Weapons certification typically requires extensive testing to prove reliability and safety. Each munition type must be validated through multiple test launches under various conditions. Electronic warfare capabilities must demonstrate effectiveness against realistic threats without causing friendly force interference. The regulatory environment for autonomous weapons remains uncertain. International discussions about autonomous systems continue without clear consensus. Domestic oversight mechanisms are still evolving. Shield AI will need to navigate this complex landscape while advancing technical development. Manufacturing scale-up presents another challenge. Moving from hand-built prototypes to production line aircraft requires establishing supply chains, training workers, implementing quality control, and achieving cost targets that make large-scale procurement feasible. What this means for air power, the VBAT's emergence, whether it achieves every performance target or not, signals a fundamental shift in how militaries think about air combat. Traditional air power doctrine has centered on manned aircraft for over a century. Pilots were not just operators, they were the irreplaceable element that made aircraft effective. Training programs, base infrastructure, support systems, even weapons design all revolved around keeping pilots alive and effective. Autonomous systems change this calculus entirely. When aircraft can operate without pilots, you can accept different risk profiles. You can employ tactics that would be suicidal for manned platforms. You can saturate defenses with numbers that would be impossible with crewed aircraft. This doesn't necessarily mean autonomous fighters are superior to manned platforms across all scenarios. The F-35 and F-22 will likely remain more capable in pure performance terms for years to come. But capability isn't the only relevant metric. Availability matters, deployability matters, cost per flight hour matters, political will to risk pilots matters. The VBAT potentially offers advantages in each of these dimensions, even if it can't match the absolute performance of top-tier manned fighters. The most likely future involves mixed operations where manned and unmanned platforms operate cooperatively. Human pilots and advanced fighters could command autonomous wingmen, leveraging AI processing speed while maintaining human judgment for critical decisions. This hybrid approach might prove more effective than either manned or unmanned systems alone. The Autonomous Revolution The VBAT represents more than just another aircraft entering development. It embodies a fundamental question about the future of warfare. When machines can think, decide, and act at speeds humans cannot match, what role do humans play in combat operations? We're witnessing the early stages of a transformation as significant as the introduction of jet propulsion or stealth technology. Autonomous systems won't just supplement traditional forces, they'll create entirely new operational possibilities that didn't exist before. The technical challenges are substantial, but solvable. The ethical questions are profound and ongoing. The strategic implications are still unfolding as military planners work through scenarios where autonomous systems change conflict dynamics in ways we're only beginning to understand. Whether the VBAT achieves its ambitious timeline or faces delays and technical hurdles, the direction is clear. Artificial intelligence is coming to air combat. The question isn't whether autonomous fighters will fly, it's how quickly they'll become standard rather than experimental. Shield AI's target dates, VTL demonstrations in 2026, Combat readiness by 2028, full production in 2029, represent aggressive goals that would compress decades of traditional development into just a few years. Success would demonstrate that modern engineering tools, combined with innovative approaches to autonomy, can fundamentally accelerate how military capabilities evolve. The race for AI air power has indeed begun. From test facilities in Nevada to operational theaters across the Pacific, Next-generation air combat is taking shape. The fighter that doesn't need a runway, doesn't need a pilot, and doesn't need to fear, that's not a distant future concept. That's what Shield AI is building right now. If you found this examination of the VBAT and autonomous fighter development valuable, share your thoughts in the comments. Do you think autonomous systems will become dominant in air combat? What concerns you most about AI-controlled weapons? How should militaries balance innovation with oversight? Let me know what you think and make sure you're subscribed for more analysis of emerging military technologies that are reshaping modern warfare. Thanks for watching.